and congratulations for arriving to this important step. Uh, I suggest that if you open the participant screen, maybe you make sure that uh, no one is is with the uh, with the microphone on, and uh, the the structure of this uh, final seminar is a seminar about 35 minutes uh, or a little bit more depending on the candidate. Okay, perfect. So everyone. It's all okay now. Looks like okay. Okay. And after that, they there will be question and answers. Then the panel will convene to take a decision on this final seminar, and uh, and we'll call back the candidate, communicate our decisions. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Nasir. Back to you. Thank you. Welcome everyone to my PhD final seminar. I'm your host, Juan Sandino, and today I'm going to talk about autonomous decision making on UAVs under environment and object detection and survey. I would like to thank my seminar panel, my supervisors, and everyone uh, who's attending my presentation. This is my presentation outline for today. So I will begin with the introduction. The elevated number of economic and human loss caused by natural disasters, weather events, crime, and military conflicts is an ever-present issue. Just to share a statistic with you, around 38,000 people are always reported missing in Australia every year. Unfortunately, 2% of them, or 720 people, are never found. Because of this, there is an always a constant need on developing technology and intervention strategies to locate as many victims as soon as an emergency situation is declared. The small UAVs have contributed in time critical applications because of their ability to access and operate in remote, dangerous, and cluttered environments. Using UAVs have resulted in achieving higher success rates to find victims than traditional methods. A higher adoption of UAVs is because they are becoming cheaper with better sensor systems, computer vision algorithms, and automatic piloting tasks such as autonomous takeoff, autonomous landing, waypoint following, obstacle avoidance, and ob object tracking. Nevertheless, there are some limitations that have limited the use of UAVs in this kind of environments at a broader scale. Most research is focused on technological aspects of the UAV hardware and software, but not so much in autonomous decision-making. This lack of autonomous behavior has delayed the deployment of UAVs at a broader scale. So to illustrate what I mean with autonomous behavior is that in a search and rescue scenario in, in outdoor environments, a UAV with autonomous decision-making should be able to plan sequences of actions for optimal navigation and optimal planning of trajectories in complex environments. So in this case in particular, an autonomous UAV should be able to, to, to decide on an optimal sequences of actions in order to, to find the person in distress. Because of this lack of autonomy in traditional surveys, pilots rely on, this, on the streaming of camera frames. However, the prolonged use of these stream visual systems is claimed to produce fatigue to the pilot and sensory overload to the UAV system. Ultimately, the UAV behavior could be compromised if those communication systems fail. Now I would like to, to, to give you a, a quick overview of the UAV navigation problem. So what you are going to observe is an introductory video. It's an, it's an introductory video 
on autonomous navigation for these kind of applications. So assuming we have a survey in our environment, traditional approaches, traditional missions are just planning our survey plan and we normally rely normally rely Maybe it's there. Okay. I hope they can still hear. Them. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Yeah. Sorry for the for this slide. So in traditional surveys, pilots just rely on high confidence in the detections of an, of an object detection. However, it's not possible to know uh, if those detections are really accurate or not. Normally in the system, we just detect the victims, regardless if they are true positives or false positives. What I aim with this research is to increase the cognitive power of UAVs in a way that that soon after there is a, 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 de an, a detection of an object, normally with low confidence, the UAV should be able to plan, interact with the environment and plan a sequential set of actions in order to increase that confidence in the detection. So in this case in particular, the UAV started flying at 16 meters and, and once it collects observations of the environment, it gets closer to our victim. Ultimately, the goal in time critical applications such as search and rescue is the identification, localization, and quantification of victims as it prioritizes the major senior response in affected zones. Now, I would like to introduce the concept of object detection uncertainty. The lack of confidence in the detection of objects can be called or denominated object detection uncertainty. And this is a current issue in UAV fly operations. Some of the factors that cause this, that cause this lack of confidence uh, can be because of variations in the scale, illumination, variations in the viewpoint or occlusion, and also vibrations from the UAV frame uh, that, are, that, can be, that, that can be caused by the limitations of the UAV hardware or by external disturbances because these factors also cause complete data about the state of the environment, the state of the UAV, or the state of the object of interest, in this case, the victim. This lack of inf information is called partial observability. It's partial observability because we cannot infer the real state of the environment, the UAV, or the object of interest. The overall objective of my research was to increase the cognitive power in the small UAVs by incorporating a sequential decision process for autonomous navigation under environment and object detection uncertainty and partial observability. Now I'm going to discuss the literature review and the research problem. In sequential decision-making processes for autonomous navigation in small UAVs normally require to address uh, different sorts of tasks at the same time. These tasks are path planning, object finding, obstacle avoidance, and exploration or mapping. The aim of a sequential decision process or SDP is to find the optimal sequence of set of act, sorry, the optimal sequential set of actions needed to reach the survey goal. So in this, in this, in this, in this illustration, for example, the goal of the UAV is to, to explore the environment, avoid colliding with these obstacles, and find the victim. Markov decision process is a mathematical framework that allows the definition of SDPs in environments under uncertainty. So for MDPs, uh, we have a set of actions that is basically 
limited by the operational capabilities of the EAV to, to move in the environment. We also have a set of system states that are just encoded with an array of state variables that are relevant to the problem. So in this case in particular, we can say that one state could be the position of, of the EAV in the environment, another state could be the position of the obstacles, and another one could be the position of the victim. Every time the EAV takes an action, uh, there is a change in the, in, in the state. So every time the EAV takes an action, it triggers a transition to a new state. At the same time, every time the EAV takes an action, it receives a reward from the environment. So this sequence of, of actions, the states and rewards can be called like a trajectory or a policy. So the ultimate goal of an MDP is to find the trajectory who will return the, the maximum accumulated reward. So, so just to illustrate the, the goal of an NDP in this, in this image, this trajectory or this trajectory should, uh, should be considered optimal as they uh, give the, the agent the highest reward. Uh, formal definition of NDPs are defined by the tuple that you can observe here and is constituted by a finite set of states, a finite set of actions. We have the state transition function that is a mechanism to model uncertainty when in, in transition changes using probability distributions. We have our reward function that is the expected reward that the agent can, can receive given an state and an action. We have a discount factor that essentially prioritizes the, the, the relevance of immediate rewards over long-term rewards. And we have the concept of a motion policy that, or, or, or the trajectory from the previous slide that is just a mapping of states to actions that maximizes an accumulated return. In UAV navigation problems, optimal path planning is challenging in the presence of partial observability because it's not possible to infer the actual state of our environment, the EAV, or, or objects of interest or targets. This has inspired the formulation of part, partially observable MDPs or POMDPs. And they have been proven to be particularly useful to make navigation for EAVs to make navigation decisions under these conditions. A formal definition of, of a POMDP is defined by the table that you can observe here, where we have the same set of variables of an MDP plus a finite set of observations that observations are the actual representations of the environment that we get from the sensor systems of the EAV. And we, we also have an observation precision function that is the mechanism to model uncertainty using a probability distribution. In addition, we have an initial belief state. So what I mean with, what, what I mean with belief state, belief state, is the mechanism to model partially observable states using probability distributions. So the, the modeling of, of partially observable, observable states with probability distributions is called a belief. So they, in a POMDP, the UAV start planning from an, initial poly, from an initial belief that is defined basically by the conditions of the mission itself. And ultimately the goal of a POMDP or a, a POMDP problem is solved once we can find an optimal policy that is defined using this equation. The main difference is that compared to an MDP, we don't plan over system states, but instead from belief, uh, sorry, from belief states. In general, on the use of POMDPs for, for autonomous UAV navigation in time critical applications, I found the, the, the following research gaps. First, the majority of proposed solvers that I have found have been tested in simulation conditions only. There is also lack of research supporting algorithm validation in complex real world scenarios using small UAVs. That means that normally authors simplify the conditions of their experiments, um, such as using trivial objects or navigating in mostly open areas or areas without any obstacles. There is also a computational burner to run these algorithms in resource constrained hardware on board small UAVs. Because of this computational burner, 
I found that there is a dependency of using external workstations to allocate some of these computational intensive, intensive tasks. And still, this is, this is undesirable as this could compromise the performance of small EAVs. A way to categorize POMDP solvers can be by uh, calling model-free and model-based methods. So in model-free methods, the agent normally doesn't have a model of the environment. Because of this, the agent needs to interact physically with the environment by trial and error and iterate thousands of times in a simulated environment until, until the model can find an approximation of that optimal policy. However, this, this training process requires elevated amounts of computing power, and there should be a strong reliance in the physics simulators to achieve this. Because of this, in model-free methods, we cannot, have, we cannot afford hardware failure. It's not possible just to let the UAV crash with the environment if we want to do training in the real world. As a result, we, uh, I, I, I chose to, to work with model-based methods. And just to give a comparison in model-based methods, we have a model of the environment. And because of this, there is not necessary to spend the same amount of computational resources than model-free methods. In some, in some applications, however, it might be impractical to use these methods if it's not possible to model the dynamics of the environment. However, there is research who has demonstrated the capabilities of using model-based POMDP solvers on board small EVs. The contributions who have investigated this particular problem in detail are the works from Vanegas and Gonzalez, who have developed an autonomous navigation system in GPS in our environment using small EVs. The authors compare two of the state-of-the-art solvers called POMCP and NDT in simulation and real flight tests. So these authors were, are some of the few ones who have gone to the next level and provide a preliminary uh, result of, of how can we use POMDPs for autonomous navigation use in real flight tests. There is another work from Chan et al. who, who, who developed a UAV system for multi-target car recognition application. The authors claim that the framework was designed to run the solver on board the UAV and optimize during execution. Nevertheless, I found some research gaps. Experimental designs were simplified to detect trivial objects in setups with high confidence of detected objects. Also, there is a lack of reproducibility of previous framework implementations because of incomplete experimentation details. So it's, very, it's, it's, it's hard to try to replicate their systems because there are always details missing about the, the, the hardware or software components or, or of, of their implemented frameworks. There is also lack of validation on robustness of model-based POMDP solvers, as test results are limited to a single case study and implementation. That means that in most of the works that I found, all the experiments are just constrained to a single case study and single domain. So this is very, it's very complex to really understand the limits or the, yeah, like how far can we use POMDPs for a diverse range of applications? Lastly, uncertainty in detected objects is not considered. That means that uh, normally it is assumed that, that, that our detections are of, are of a high level of confidence. And, um, and because of this, I have formulated two core resource questions. The first question considers all the, the, the formulation considerations uh, for an autonomous navigation problem using small UAVs. From this question, I have, I have specified three sub-questions that address key aspects about, about the, the formulation of this problem. In the first sub-question, I ask about what, what is the level of artificial cognitive learning and uncertainty modeling that is required to identify, localize, and quantify objects in challenging scenarios using vision-based object detectors. In the second sub-question, I ask about the factors that define the complexity of the extent of an SDP to reduce object detection uncertainty from collected environment observations using vision-based sensors in critical applications. The, the last sub-question is on the modeling considerations in a formulated SDP that allow the scalability of my framework for autonomous navigation for a range 
of UAV remote sensing applications. The formulation of an autonomous navigation problem normally involves the development of a framework. Therefore, my second research question addresses all the design considerations of my framework. So I have two sub questions. Um, the first one is on how can computational intensive applications such as state-of-the-art SDPs and onboard inference of CNN models for object detection and cementation be integrated to run simultaneously under resource constrained hardware contained in sub two kilogram UAVs. The second sub question is on what are the design criteria to scale my framework in to, to other remote sensing applications that can also require autonomous decision making capabilities on board small UAVs. This thesis is a thesis by published papers. As a result, what you, what you can observe in the diagram is the contribution of each paper to the research questions that I just mentioned to you. These papers uh, also represent an overview of the methodology of my research. The first paper was in charge, sorry, in, in, my, in my first paper, we formulated the PomDP problem for navigation in GPS denied environments. In the second paper, we developed and tested our framework to, to implement that, that formulated problem for sub two kilogram UAVs. Then for paper three, we extended the problem formulation from paper one for autonomous navigation in outdoor environments. In paper four, we also uh, adjust the framework design so we can validate the POM, the, the POM DP formulation on paper three, but, uh, but in outdoor environments. Lastly, in paper five, I'm, I'm part of paper four, I perform some scalability and robustness tests in, in applications using thermal imagery for search and rescue and, and, and planetary exploration. Now I'm going to talk about three, the, the three core components of my contribution. So the first component is on autonomous decision-making in indoor environments. And what I'm going to show you here are, uh, are, are results that are published for, uh, in papers one and two. So the first component is the problem formulation. I'm just going to explain a generic problem, uh, problem description and formulation using PomDPs. In indoor environments, the goal of, the, of this task for the UAV is to find a victim that is presumably located inside a, inside a cluttered indoor area. The victim here is static. The, excuse me. The, 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 we have a set of obstacles here. And then uh, we have our set of actions. Sorry. Now I'm going to talk about the PMTP formulation. So for, for our set of actions, we have the actions that you can see on the screen. So th these are essentially position commands where we have a variable here that I highlighted that is called, that is called delta and is the magnitude of change of position coordinates between time steps. So just to give a, here a quick illustration, if I want to go forward, that delta defines the length, in the change of position between time steps. So if it's one meter, the UAV should go one meter on the next time step if I want the UAV to go forward. Then we have a, a, set, a set of states, including the UAV position, the, a flag, if a potential object is detected, that's essentially my first uh, positive detection from my detector, regardless of the confidence level. And I have another flag that I'm highlighting that is uh, a flag if an object is confirmed. This flag is defined partly by this variable that is our, our detection confidence metric that I will explain in, in the next few slides. In the transition function is defined essentially by the model dynamics of my quadrotor UAV, defined by this equation. I take into account that uh, my set of actions that do, do not involve the, the rotation of my UAV or, or change of heading, uh, this function can be simplified uh, without considering my multi-rotor rotation metrics. And, and the only variable that I'm modeling here is the position change between time steps. To model this, to, to model this delta, 
I conducted a system identification process. It's a process where we can get um, a model, a model of the dynamics of the UAV by retrieving the transfer, the transfer function of the plant if we use control theory definitions. After getting the transfer function of the plant, I, dis, I, I apply the set transform and then uh, with the discretized plant, I, I apply another series of steps until converging into a difference equation. That is, this is, that is the one that you can observe here. Then for the reward function, in, in, in navigation in cluttered indoor environments, the reward function is, 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 is this sum of reward variables who are conditioned by the action taken of the UAV and also by the, by the state of the, the, the state of the system. Important reward variables that I would like to highlight here is a reward if a potential object is detected that is defined using this, this function. So essentially it says that if I have a detected object, I will assign a constant reward value. And otherwise I will apply this linear function that essentially gives penalties to the UAV, the farther it is from our, from, 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 from our victim. Another reward variable that I would like to highlight here is the cost if the UAV is located in previously explored areas. To illustrate a concept of, of, of this cost, I'm illustrating here a projection of my camera's field of view. So every time the UAV takes an action, it's, it's, it's making a trajectory uh, in this cluttering indoor environment. So essentially what I, what, I, what I want to do with this cost, uh, with this reward variable is to, is to penalize, to give a penalty to the robot if a future action will lead into a area that was already explored. Then we have a set of observations that as I mentioned before, this is essentially the, the data that we get from our sensor systems. So important, well, uh, some observations include the, the estimated position of the UAV that that's given by the, by the flight controller. We also have our estimated object location that that's, that's estimated from our object detector. And here we have our detection confidence that in this case is a summary statistic of the confidence level in our detections. This conf the detection confidence is estimated or calculated using this equation that essentially, uh, essentially tracks the number of positive detections that I have between observation calls. So to, to, to give you an example, if, if between observation calls, I retrieve 20, 20 frames, and if from those 20 frames, I get 10 positive detections, my detection confidence will be of 50%. Then for the observation model, I have three components. The motion model of the UAV, that it is defined using the same equations in the transition function. The second component is the detection of potential objects that in this case, these are conditioned by the camera's field of view. And to do that, uh, the, the approach is essentially first to retrieve the position coordinates of the corners of my field of view. And then I need to do, uh, I need to do, um, I need to use this equation to estimate if a given point that represents a potential location of my victim is inside that, that, that field of view. So this equation essentially computes the sum of angles between the victim position and each pair of points that comprise the field of view corners. If that angle equals two pi, the coordinate point of the object will be inside of the camera's field of view. Lastly, the third component is the detection confidence and is defined using this linear equation that essentially is telling us that the closer um, uh, the UAV is from the victim or the object of interest, the higher the confidence in the detection and vice versa. Then I'm going to briefly discuss the, my, the design of my framework for, for, for indoor environments. So this is a high level overview of the system architecture that has defined key modules uh, of our system. So we have the vision module who is in charge of, of processing camera frames and, and returning us detection outputs of the victim. 
we have the planner module that contains the PomDP planner and outputs action commands from observations. And here we have essentially the, 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 the operation of our autopilot that normally includes a local position estimation algorithm who, is, who depends on, on the readings of a series of sensors. So for GPS denial environments, we use a visual odometry system to estimate the local position of the UAV when we don't have coverage of GPS. To do this, we need to compute an SLAM algorithm that um, in this case is, is done on board the companion computer, as well as any of the great components that you can see in this diagram. So what you, what you are observing here is our framework implementation for this set of experiments. It's important to highlight that this is just our implementation, but all similar UAV frames and similar payloads can also be used for this application. Key hardware components that I, I would like to highlight here is my visual odometry camera that is an Intel RealSense D265, the companion computer that is an Intel Apple Square, and my flight controller, a PixHawk 4. So the vision module uh, essentially, essentially conducts on board inference of a convolutional neural network. In this case, we are using a visual, pro visual vision processing unit that is in charge of allocating and computing convolutional operations um, rather than using resources from a CPU or a GPU. In this, in this implementation, we use the OpenVINO toolkit to convert and optimize convolutional neural networks that can be used with this, with this hardware, with the VPU. And in indoor, in capture indoor environments, we use an off-the-shelf mobile net SSD to detect people. The planner module contains an observation server who essentially uh, controls the, all, all the data from, from the UAV. We have here the PomDP, the formulated PomDP pro problem and solver implementation. That in this case, we use ABT to solve the problem using the Tapir toolkit. Uh, the companion computer runs Ubuntu Server 18.04. Uh, to, to design the communication between all the framework modules, I use the robot operating system. And the autopilot is is being powered by the PX4 flight control software. What you can observe here is just a summary of some of the motion planner hyperparameters for the series of experiments that I'm going to show you. And to illustrate my, my system in GPS and environments, I evaluated three case studies of possible victim locations in my environment. So what you can observe here in the point cloud, in this red point cloud, is the representation of my belief state of the position of the victim. So the difference between, so I have three case studies. The first one with one potential location, the second one with two locations, and the third one when I know, don't know the location at all. So as you can observe here, the UAV takes off from an initial position coordinate, and every time the UAV takes an observation from, from the vision systems. It, it uh, computes and updates the policy and executes the, the action from that optimal policy. So the arrows that you can observe are just the, the, the action commands by the UAV while it's navigating in indoor environments. And what you are observing in the videos is just a transition between results in simulation and with real flight tests. Overall, uh, as, as you can observe, the performance of the system in both environments is, is quite similar. And what you, what you observe here in these blocks is the occupancy map of the environment. This occupancy map has the purpose of, of aiding the localization of obstacles. And it, um, it is also read by the observation server to avoid to avoid the UAV to collide with obstacles. So 
So in this last part of the video, I'm just illustrating the system behaving when we don't know the location of our victim at all. So in this case, the, the, the AV essentially conducts a, a whole exploration of the environment. And once it gets a positive detection of our victim, we reduce the uncertainty in the position of the victim as the point cloud gets narrower uh, to, the, to, the locate, to the actual location of the victim. So in this last component, I'm just comparing simulation and real world experiments. So uh, I was able to get extremely close results between both setups. As I mentioned before, these blue arrows illustrate the action commands taken by the motion planner while the UAV was navigating in real world experiments. So here I, I wanted just to illustrate the robustness of the system to, 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 to explore the environment regardless of some uh, motion imperfections caused by the controller of the UAV. Overall, the system was quite performant to detect objects for all most of the most of the uh, setups. We achieved an overall accuracy of 97.2% in simulation and 82.6% for flight, real flight tests. About the duration of the system to detect uh, a victim, uh, we get closely related values between simulation and real flight tests with a significant higher amount of steps to, to detect dual clusters and, and just to explore the environment where we don't know the, 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 uh, an approximate location of our victim. Then for my second component, I would like to quickly give you an overview of, of autonomous decision-making in outdoor environments. And this is just the result, sorry, what I'm going to show is part of the results that are published in papers three and four. So the description in outdoor environments is for the UAV to find a static victim that is presumably located or last seen in a bushland. From now on, I'm just going to explain the, the updates to the previous problem formulation that, that applies for navigation in outdoor environments. So regarding our set of actions, the values of Delta are now variable. Are now variable because when we explore in outdoor environments, we expect the UAV to, to to fly at different altitudes. And if we always have a constant value of our delta, the, these, these actions might not be efficient at all. For this reason, delta now is defined using this equation that essentially depends on the camera's projected field of view. So we can understand what is the footprint uh, of, 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 the, of, the, of the field of view, and also our desired overlap value. So if we have high overlap values, that means that, sorry, that will result in a conservative motion response to explore the environment. If we have low overlap values, the UAV will behave more aggressively as it needs basically to, to ensure that low overlap between action commands. Regarding the reward function, instead of, instead of having a straight sum of reward variables, I implemented this pseudo code or algorithm that you can observe on the screen. So in this case, I'm going priority to different sets of, of, of states. Um, I have introduced like a, 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 an extension of certain costs, such as the UV altitude and the horizontal distance. So I can, I, can, uh, I can model or I can influence the behavior of the UAV to explore the environment where there are no positive detections of, of our victim and to inspect the specific areas once we have positive detections. Regarding the framework design in outdoor environments, now we normally have some preliminary data about the environment itself, normally by the projection of satellite imagery and also the capability of planning missions uh, using ground control station systems. And in some cases in particular, we could get uh, high resolution data of the environments that we are exploring. In this case, in the, in, the, in the setup where I conducted experiments, we get access to georeference LiDAR data of the environment. And because of this, I was able to project this 3D occupancy map using this LiDAR data in my simulated environment in Gazebo. So updates in the system architecture, in this case, include that now we have the use of GPS 
uh, as part of the sensors to estimate the position of our, of our EAV. And a second upgrade is the development of a extra model that is the motion module. And the reason behind this is because I, I formulated for the experiments three flight modes. The first mode is mission mode, that is the traditional survey uh, using a lawnmower pattern. And we use this as, a, as our baseline motion planner. The second flight mode is soft board that essentially runs our pump DP motion planner. Um, and, we and we distribute the initial belief of our victim across the entire, sorry, across the entire flying area. In this case, I developed a new flight mode that is called hybrid. And the goal of this is to extend the functionality of mission mode by running the pump DP only after a first positive detection is triggered. And once that happens, the UAV should have the capability of inspecting the area uh, just to confirm or discard that there is a victim in that location. So the difference in terms of the pump DP solver or the initial belief, sorry, is that in hybrid mode, I distribute my initial belief of the position of the victim just to the extent of the field of view of my camera rather than using the whole, rather than spraying that in the, in the whole area. Updates to the, updates to the UAV framework implementation are mostly on, on the payload used. So in these experiments, I use a combination of a webcam and the GoPro Hero 9 mounted on, on, in an anti-vibration bracket. And here we just have an overview of the hyperparameters that I use for the experiments. So just to give a quick idea, we, fly, we flew the UAV at 16 meters. That's the maximum altitude. The minimum altitude is 5.25 uh, meters. And the rest of the variables just define the initial position of the UAV, my overlapping, my overlap value of 40%, and a confidence threshold of 85%. So experiments were conducted in Sanford Research Ecological Facility. I would like just to give a quick overview of mission mode. So in mission mode, we just record the, the, any positive detections of our, our detector, regardless if they are false positive or true positives. So this is just an overview of the system working in simulation and with real flight tests. So as you can observe in real flight tests, sometimes the frames are not crispy, but they are like blurry because of vibrations happening while we fly the EAV. And what you observe here is the, is the system working in off-board mode. So we spread the initial state belief of our victim across the entire flying area. And once the EAV explores and gets a first, a triggers a first detection of our victim, the EAV starts navigating, starts interacting with the environment to increase the confidence of our detection, or in this case, to discard or confirm that that victim was, well, is there. This is just an illustration of the system working with real flight tests. So as you can observe the, the, the behavior of the system and the behavior of the system is quite similar between simulation and real world environments. A significant difference is is that the position control systems of the UAV tend to be slightly more noisier in real world experiments. And in this case, we apply the same principle. Once we have a, a first detection, we redistribute the, 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 the belief of the state of our victim. And in the last component, that's the hybrid mode. So we do the normal flight in mission mode. And once there is a first detection, I, I run the pump DP planner to only inspect the area covered by the, field, by the camera's field of view. In this case, because the first detection uh, triggered a low confidence in our detections, they really needed to explore this area in detail. This is just an illustration of the system in hybrid mode using real flight tests. So in this case, because the observations captured by our cameras were less accurate than in the simulation, they really needed to interact more with the environment until it was able to confirm that the mannequin was there. 
what I want, what, I, what you're observing is just the, the heat maps of recorded GPS coordinates of the system. First in mission mode in simulation, then in off power mode in simulation, and then hybrid mode in simulation. Similarly, for real flight tests, these are the heat maps using mission mode, off board mode, and then hybrid mode. The system was performant for most of the setup conditions. The only exception or the, the only setup that gave, gave us not that very high values was in off board uh, using location one. And the main reason was because in location one, the victim was located close to some of the borders of my survey area. So in some iterations, the UAV didn't, didn't actually explore that specific area and instead it, it decided, it decided to, to explore the remainder of the environment. That resulted in some flights to not to detect the victim because it consumed all the flying time and also an increase in the duration of the, of the task until a victim was detected. Lastly, my third component is to illustrate some scalability tests. And this, these, are, these results are just part of the published papers, number four and number five. So the first test is study, is, is study sorry, is the illustration of the system. But in this case, rather than using an RGB camera, we use a thermal camera, specifically a Fleur Tau 2, and a different CNN object detector that was trained using thermal imagery. This is just an overview of the system using of port mode. And what I would like to highlight in this particular video in, in with real flight tests is the, is the behavior of the UAV when it detects a false positive. In this case, as you can see, there was a false positive that indirectly uh, redistributed the particles. But, uh, but as you can observe here, the UAV inspects the area and after, after not receiving further positive detections, it discards the location of the victim in that, in that patch and it restores the previous distribution of my, of, of my belief and the UAV continues the exploration. After continuing the exploration, later it gets another positive instance. In this case, uh, with a hit signature of our PhD researcher volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can observe here, the UAV is essentially interacting with the environment in an effort to increase the confidence in, in our detections. So once the confidence exceeds a threshold, the UAV, the, 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 the victim is confirmed. And in off-board mode, the task is finished at that moment. In hybrid mode, after a victim is confirmed, the UAV will resume its mission and continue and, and it continues the survey until there is a new detection. So in this case, I'm just illustrating the system using hybrid mode. And what you, what you can observe in this screen is just uh, an RGB camera attached to the drone just to have a, 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 a color illustration of what's happening. So as you can see, the UAV inspects that area to confirm that our volunteer is indeed uh, cl close to that tree. This is just a quick of illustration of the system uh, navigating when there is a false positive. So essentially what the UAV will do is to perform a horizontal exploration of the environment. And because we don't have any positive detections of our victim, the, party, the belief particles have been filtered. If all the particles get filtered, the UAV discards the location of the victim and it continues the mission in, yeah. This is just a comparison of heat maps uh, between all the three flight modes. The system was also performing in, in thermal, in, using thermal imagery. So as you can observe here in mission mode, the amount of false positives was, ex, was ex, uh, extremely high and that resulted in hybrid mode to expend significantly more time to explore areas triggered by false positives and discarding them. Lastly, the last component is a system preview uh, of the of, of my system to detect desiccation cracks. So desiccation cracks is, is a way to, is a way where we can find 
past life forms or biosignatures. So this is an illustration of a desiccation crack. So essentially the goal of the system was to detect and map an area with a desiccation crack. Uh, and updating the framework included the use of a novel camera and object detector. This is an illustration of, of, of my UAV system. And what you can observe here is how we place the, the desiccation cracks across the flight, across the, 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 the survey area. This is just a quick illustration on how the system behaves uh, once there is a first detection of our crack with a low confidence in the detection. So once we run the pump dipping hybrid mode, the UAV gets close, close enough until achieving a detection confidence on 100%. Similarly, the behavior when there is a false positive is for the UAV to perform a horizontal exploration until all the, the, the belief particles are filtered or until there is a new positive detection who will redistribute my, the representation of the belief. In this case of study, we get extremely good results for mission and hybrid modes at 20 meters. There were some limitations when we were doing the survey at 10 meters because of limitations in the object detector. To conclude, this thesis presented an approach to formulate an SDP for autonomous UAV navigation and object finding in GPS denied environments. Also, I developed a framework for autonomous decision making on board sub two kilogram UAVs for indoor environments under object detection uncertainty. I also formulated a problem for autonomous navigation in outdoor environments using the flight modes that I described before. I developed a, mod a modular and scalable UAV framework for autonomous navigation in outdoor environments illustrated with, with, with a set of, of payloads for search and rescue. And also I developed a framework for autonomous detection and mapping of desiccation cracks using small UAVs. Lastly, I developed an approach to replicate real world outdoor environments in robotic simulators from collected airborne data. So addressing my research questions, for the first research question that in which we ask about what is the level of artificial cognitive learning and uncertainty modeling required to identify, localize, and quantify objects from vision-based object detectors. I found that pump DPs are indeed suitable for decision-making on board small UAVs. The development of model-based solvers, in this case the ABT, provided flexibility to model uncertainty using probabilistic distributions or a set of belief states. I a validated approach to model uncertainty using pom dps consisted on predicting the local position changes of the UAV using the system identification process, also estimating the, de the detection of a potential victim using the camera's field of view, and finally modeling the detection confidence using the linear function that I explained in the observation model. For the second research question, that, that uh, analyzes the factors that define the complexity extent of an SDP to reduce object detection uncertainty. I found that the definition of my reward function and assign reward values is critical for the behavior of the UAV. In a less critical way, uh, I also found the hyperparameter tuning and the definition of list of actions had an impact in the behavior of the UAV. The software capabilities by the PX4 autopilot, specifically, the usage, the, the usage of off-board mode and the MAFRAS wrapper simplified my problem formulation and as, as I only needed to, to formulate high-level position commands rather than low-level control commands to, to operate the motors. Lastly, the development of hybrid mode extended my PomDP formulation to detect multiple objects in outdoor environments. So this, with, with this contribution, it was not necessary, at least for outdoor environments, to extend the problem formulation, as it was only necessary to develop hybrid mode. In, the la, in research question 1.3, um, that considers the modeling considerations to scale my framework in areas beyond remote sensing application needs, multiple payload integration was, achi was achieved due to the mathematical modeling of a camera's field of view and the foot foot footprint stent using the sensor lens properties. Also, I was able to uh, test various CNN model integrations because of the design of a modular system architecture that allocated high level output data from CNN models into the observation server. For the second question, 
that talks about the design considerations of my framework, I found that developing a realistic simulation environment and the software toolkits help bridging the gap between simulated experiments and real flight tests. Then that's because uh, it was possible to emulate the functionality of the UAV autopilot using software in the loop. And also uh, because of enabling hardware in the loop to test the developed PomDP solvers running on board the, the, the physical computer in, for real flight tests. I was also able to perform onboard inference of CNN models on board the companion computer using hardware in the loop in simulation by emulating a, a, uh, a vision-based sensor that also reduced the, the amount of resources until converging into a optimal UAV framework. For my last research question that talks about the design criteria to scale my framework, uh, I found that the, the framework follows a modular, a modular approach to individually develop and execute key components such as the computer vision module, mapping module, decision-making module, and motion module. Lastly, I was able to, to test the proposed framework with a series of case studies in domains such as search and rescue and planetary exploration. To conclude, some research feature research avenues include updating my 3D occupancy map of the environment mid-flight or when the UAV is interacting with the environment. It will be great for future implementations to implement comp complex camera configurations. So instead of just having a downward looking uh, configuration of my camera, it will be beneficial to explore other, other configurations such as looking at the front or at different angles or variable angles using a gimbal. It is uh, also extended problem formulation for multiple and dynamic objects and for a swarm of UAVs, especially if I want to do search and rescue in outdoor environments and if I need to cover massive areas to, to locate my victim. Last but not least, it is necessary to investigate what are the existing standards to use these systems for search and rescue operations. What you can see here is just the list of publications that resulted from this investigation uh, as part of chapter paper, chapter, as part of the thesis chapters and these publications as far that were not part of, of the chapters of, the th of this thesis. Thank you everyone for attending my presentation and feel welcome to ask any questions.